Why so much emphasis? What's the secret of marriage? What's the benefit of marriage? So you need to know. And you, the one who is aspiring to get married, get this benefit and objectives on your fingertips. And those of us who are married, let's go and ask ourselves whether we have achieved it or not. First benefit. First benefit is to hold the hand of each other to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Through my marriage, I need to know Allah and get closer to Him. You see, today, the moment you get married, they hardly go to mosque. This is really disturbing. It disturbs me as a youth. Wallahi, because I contract so many marriages. In a year, maybe 50 more. It's disturbing. So that made me to understand, no, 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 people have not yet understood what marriage is all about in Islam. If I'm a weak in my ibadah, and I get married, that marriage should take me to Allah. But we married. What is in our mind only outing, outing, outing? Where do we go for holidays this time? You will never when hear them planning. planning. When, when are we are going we to start, start going to the mosque, mosque every, every day or every, every Friday? Friday. You'll not you will not see people discussing that. You will not see people discussing which book are we have, have to read to in this month as family. You will not see families talking about now how many verses of Quran do we have to understand the tafsir. No, 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 no. Where are we going for holidays this summer? Where are we going? Last week, we went to this restaurant, this coming week. These are trivial issues. These are secondary issues. More Thanawi. More Etebari. More Hakiki. So therefore, number one, marriage has to take me to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hence, you find the riwayah of Amir al-Mu'mineen and Fatima al-Zahra. When Imam Amir got to marry to Bibi Fatima alayhi salam, Rasulullah visited Amir al muminin And he asked him, How is your wife? What did Imam Ali say? Ni'ma la'awni ala ta'a. Allahu Akbar. Ni'ma la'awni ala ta'a. Blessed be on an assistant to be obedient to Allah. Meaning Fatima al Zahra alayhi salam. In that, that one, one night, night she was, was a great, great pillar of assistance to Amir al muminin to be more obedient to Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's number one. That's why we get married. Because I know I'm weak. I may not be able to wake up for Fajr Salah. I may be lazy for my Salah. But I know my wife will remind me. I may be lazy in wearing my hijab. I know my husband will remind me today. Our husbands tell their wife, I don't want you to wear that hijab. Don't go out with it. I want you to look presentable. So it means we have not understood Islamic teachings and principles about what that's number one. Number two, philosophy and benefit of marriage is al itma'inan wa sukoon nafsi. Inner peace and tranquility. Because you see, when you are alone, alone, and I know brothers who are sitting here and sisters who are alone, they know what I'm going to talk about. Because I'm also from there. I've been alone sometime. Back. Not anymore, inshallah. When you are alone, there are things sometimes you want to confide with someone. You look at here, my father, my mom, my sister. Okay, these are very close to me. Can I confide with them? No. Why? Because when the time is up, I will go to my bed alone. They will all go to their beds. The only one is your wife and your husband. Because all these people sitting next to you, fine. These are friends. They argue. They spend the whole night with you, fine. Later on, everybody will go. 
Oh no, you the same house with your father and mom. This one will go to his bed, that one will go to his room, that one. So therefore, when Islam says, which is Quran, the second philosophy of marriage is to give you inner peace and tranquility. Because whatever you have as a problem, either of personal stress or social stress or political stress or sometimes religious stress, although I don't believe in that type of a stress, when you get back home to your wife and your husband, the moment you start confiding with the person, you find peace. That is one pillar of marriage. You are able to confide with her. What you cannot even confide with your father or your mom. There are things you cannot just tell your father. And there are things you cannot just tell your mom or even your sister. No matter how closer you are to one another. But your wife is easy. So therefore, Quran in Surah to Rome. Let us go no ilayha. So that you dwell in them. So that, so that you, you obtain, obtain peace, peace and tranquility. So that so is the second philosophy of marriage. It brings it peace. It brings tranquility. It brings comfort. It, it makes you live your life in ease. No stress. Whoever is married and is stressed, then there's something wrong in that marriage. I guarantee you. Wallahi. Marriage with stress, then it's not a proper marriage. There is something wrong with that. You cannot be married and you are worried again. That's number two. Benefit of marriage. Number three, secret of marriage. Sense of responsibility. You see, if you are alone, you may think you are very responsible. But ask those who are married. It's a great deal of responsibility. And I'm not and I'm talking, talking of only monetary, monetary responsibility. responsibility. How to make marriage work better. The wife is thinking about it. The husband is thinking about it. What do I do to make him happy? What do I do to make him happy? It's a sense of responsibility. And when you come to the monetary field also, when I have money before I spend, I think twice. So marriage brings about sense of responsibility. Of course, when children are there, that's the different ball game. But the two of you, now you are alone, you may think, I'm very responsible. I'm working, I'm serving my money. I plan my year lovely, excellently. No, ask those who are married, they will tell you. That sense of responsibility within marriage, you cannot find it anywhere. So the third benefit is that there is a sense of responsibility. The fourth secret and benefit of marriage is what? It brings order in the community. Things are not done or handled haphazardly in chaotic way. Therefore, Rasulullah mentioned, but I'm not saying all those who are not married are like that. The worst of you are those who are single. Of course, not every single. Because there are those who are married, those who are Allah, they are shiririn. They are the worst. But then it brings order in the community. Things are placed in order. Because there is marriage. He is married. She is married. And the young ones are looking up to them. They are their role models. They see them loving, caring, friendly in their marital relationship. They are also expecting to get married. And the and fourth, fourth benefit, benefit of marriage, of brothers and sisters. Allah mentioned in Quran, وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً Fourth and fifth. Naturally, in son, you need someone to love you. Naturally. You cannot just stay, you say, I live my life, whether somebody loves me. You need somebody to love you here and there. And there is no better person to do that than your wife and husband, I promise you. If Allah said, Wajah Bayna Kumma Wadatan Warama. Father, you love me, I know. Mom, you love me so much, I know. But my wife, my husband, is a different ball game. So that mawadda it comes in marriage. And of course to Ahl al Bayt alayhi salam as Quran mentioned. Kulla as alukuma alayya ajara illa al mawadda tafil kuruba. You need mawadda, you need somebody to love you. 
and to demonstrate that love to you alone with you and you need to show that again naturally we need that you need a heart that you know when you pour something it stays there that is my what and then the last one says the fifth one is what rahma Mawadda, two-sided. I need it, she need it. But later on in the marriage, there may be not Mawadda, it may be Rahma. What is Rama? One person is not doing well, but the other person is handling the person. It's not losing his or her cool. He's at fault, but I won't say because of his fault, I'm going to reject him and throw him. She's at fault, I'm not going to say because of her fault, I'm going to throw her. I hold her, I keep her, she's my wife, no problem. These are the benefit of marriage. And then, of course, another one Quran mentioned, It's another benefit of marriage. They are your garments, and you are their garments. What does it mean? They are your protective measure, and you are their protective measure. That's the benefit of marriage. Wherever you are, you represent your wife. Wherever she is, she represents you. She is overprotective of you, and if you are wrong later on when you are alone, she's able to tell you. That's the benefit of marriage. In other words, you need somebody to plan your life with. You need somebody to hold each other's hand and plan it together and build civilization. Like the way Fatima Zahra built civilization, and today all of us are benefiting from the civilization established by Fatima Zahra and Amir al-Mu'mineen.